right, so, so good day class. So welcome to our next lec next lecture, which is city planning towards the modern age. So transitioning from the past. So if you could remember, our past lecture was about the Fertile Crescent up to the Roman period. Now we're heading towards the modern age. Okay. So for a historical context, so we're looking into the Renaissance. If you still remember your world history, the Renaissance was a period of enlightenment, revival of the arts, a restudying of the classics. So, the European kingdoms as the world's superpowers. So, we're looking at Netherlands, of course, Spain, which has been a, a part of our ancient history. Portugal, Britain, France, and Austria. So this is the period of land colonization towards the East and the discovery of the New World. If you could remember, during this period, this was a time when I think um, they were still trying to prove that the Earth was not flat, that it was spherical. So some explorers, they tried to they prove that when you go to the west, you're going to end up in the in the eastern part. So they were looking for India, but um, they arrived to different land. For example, uh, in America, they called the native Indians because they thought that by going westward, they'll be uh, if the world is uh, spherical in nature. They would end up in India, what you call Indians. Same here in the Philippines. When they arrived here, um, I think they met the locals, our ancestors. That's why they call us Indios, which is another term for Indian. Okay. So I think much of this history is uh, European based in context. So during the mercantilist era, the power of societies were centered on trade. Kingdoms took note of the fact that power was in trade and the capacity to expand trading networks and territories. So during this period, a lot of powers in Europe began to uh, expand, looking for more resources. If you could remember in your history, um, I think the motto by the Spaniards during that period was God, gold, and glory. So they would bring Catholicism, then they would uh, take the gold and, and bring glory to, to themselves by being recognized by the monarchy. Let's look at this one. So if you look at this graph, you notice the distribu redistribution of powers during the Renaissance period. So practically in the West, Power was equally distributed among European colonial powers. In the meantime, much of China and Central Asia was taken over by Genghis Khan and his successor Kublai Khan. So Mongols continued to attack the West, including the Silk Road, which prompted these city states to shift to maritime exploration. So because the Mongols were on the land, uh, a lot of city states uh, looked into the possibility of maritime trade. Okay. I think this was the period when you could see the, um, I think the ships, they're called galleons. So they're already qu quite large. And they could transport huge quantities of uh, goods and products from one place to another. So the distributed powers in Europe translates to scattered city-states, each seeking power through territorial expansion. So you have Norwa uh, Norway, Holland, France, Sweden, uh, even the United States, because the United States um, uh, is still part of, during that period, is still part of um, the United Kingdom. So this re resulted to the rise of colonial cities in the east, such as 
Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, just formerly Formosa, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, and India. So, city plants of the West began manifesting in the East. Okay. Then we have here, if you look at this, this is the red dot here. These were our colonizers. Just imagine a uh, small, uh, in this area, they controlled much of the world. Okay. Including uh, um, the Americas. So the location of the key cities of the competing uh, colonial powers, so these are the British, the Dutch, the French, the Portuguese, and Spanish. So extant city-states during the Renaissance period. Okay. So we have Milan, Rome, Paris, London, Amsterdam, Vienna, Venice, Barcelona, Madrid and Lisbon. So Lisbon is here at this map. This is Barcelona. This is Madrid. So colonialism led to the assimilation of culture, the expansion of city territories, and the imposition of urban layouts. So just like here in the Philippines, guys, um, the Spanish tried to introduce their culture here in the Philippines. We could see that in, in a lot of our churches. For example, here, the Manila Cathedral. It's the same. The characteristics are the same. What you could find in Plaza Morelio in La Paz, uh, Bolivia, Spain. In you could also notice that a lot of Filipinos have Spanish surnames, but we have American first names. Okay, so we are really truly unique in uh, Southeast Asia. Okay, next slide. So a colonial city is characterized by the blend of European or western urban form with indigenous populations and cultures. So you could see here, this is Oslo, Cebu. This is the character, uh, the, the character of the buildings. Another example is in Malacca, Malaysia. So it's really an odd blend uh, of European or urban forms. So, we should remember that colonization is not stagnant. So, there came an intriguing parallelism in the East and West with the former exhibiting a categorically European structure in for, infused with local design elements. So, as Western cities evolved, so did its city planning. Hence, the colonial cities often echoed this evolution with the added touch of local infusion. So, the colonies, they, they were adapted with Western uh, uh, planning and design, but somehow it retained a bit of local elements. So, in India, the bungalows uh, built as residences for officers of the British East India Company were built with strict ratio and proportions appropriated according to the rank of the officer. So this echoed the caste, the caste system of the Hindi society. So imposed cultural assimilation resulted to hybrids in both the colonial city and the architecture. So despite the similarities in standard design, Localized factors distinguish the colonial city from its western counterparts. So this is a good example class because in India, the caste is the, the caste systems. I don't know how to uh, pronounce that. I, I, either it's caste or caste. 
it's quite ingrained in the Indian culture. So people have different social classes. So as they adapted to the British, uh, British rule, this was uh, still inculcated, especially in the design, because even in the design of the residences for officers, they were categorized according to rank. So the first bungalows inhabited by the East India Company agents were initially the same as the Kutcha local ones, but gradually outstripped their origins to become an accurate reflection of hierarchy amongst the English community. The typical residential bungalow for the wealthy, for example, was set back from the road by a walled compound. The amount of land enclosed was a symbol of status. For a senior officer, a ratio of 15 is to 1, garden to be to built for must appropriate, while for a beginning rank, it could even be 1 is to 1. So in this sense, the British showed a hierarchical system no less uh, developed than the complex caste system which they ascribed to India. So this is an example, guys, of merging uh, Western... Uh, Western uh, culture, the local culture in India. So what constitutes uh, Renaissance city planning? So let's uh, look into that. So Renaissance city planning is initially founded on the precise replication of classical fundamentals. For example, the Hippodamian planning. So the city was built on a profound respect for classical planning, but a city planning was divided into the burgs and church central planning, so was the mindset of society divided between religion focused and alternatively trade focused. So emerging from the middle class was the power of knowledge and education, thus branding the Renaissance as an era of knowledge or the age of reason. So, during the fall of Rome, guys, I think it ushered the dark age. Uh, it ushered the dark ages of Europe. Thus, um, when the city states they became more powerful, they began trading, and through the rise of the middle class, they began. People were curious on the classical forms. So, so they went to, to Rome to study the classics and thus integrating those classics um, into their era. So thus it is a period of rebirth, an era of knowledge or the age of reason. So this was the uh, Renaissance. So the age of reason, the Renaissance. So, Protestant Reformation challenged the authority of the Roman Catholic Church and thereby encouraged a thinking culture. As a response, the Catholic Church looked into the arts to defend its mysticism and therefore its powers. So, the birth of a city planning as a comprehensive design. So, thus, from the arts to the sciences to city planning, we will find thinkers like Fontana, Brunelleschi, Michelangelo, Battista Alberti, all of whom with their own contributions to the formation of the Renaissance city. So the town, uh, I think the um, mantra here is the town must be cohesive and unified. So it is during the Renaissance period that the practice of commissioning a design professional to express works of art and consequently the reformation of the city was viewed as necessary. So it was all also in the Renaissance uh, period, guys, that um, we began to make blueprints of buildings. So it was a period of exploration and advancement also in terms of engineering because you could see that... Um, 
the architect series, uh, one of the uh, well-known architect series is Eris Brunelleschi. If you could remember your uh, architectural history, it was able to design a revolutionary uh, dome which spanned, uh, which has a which has quite an impressive span. So, this was really a an age of thinking. And um, somehow, the rebirth of the classical forms. You could see here a plan of Piazza del Campidoglio in Rome, Italy by Michelangelo. So this was the plan that they made. So piazzas were often within the city grid. So note that this time, uh, Rome was already under the power of the papacy, the Catholic Church. So as the church struggled to regain control of an increasingly learned society, principles of grandiosity dominated the world of design and the arts. The result is an explosion of perfectionism and hephalotin design ideas. So one of the most notable city plans in this era was Pope Sixtus the fifth concept of Rome connected by obelisks and piazzas. So he commissioned Domenico Fontana to conce reconceive Rome from its ruined state. So Fontana's design was aimed at turning the intersections into major focal points and was characterized by two concepts. So one was to raise the obelisk at the intersections as placemakers and orientation beacons. So here you have the obelisk. So Renaissance planning was less chaotic than the medieval town and was oriented towards open civic spaces. An example of that is the Palazzo Publico in Siena. Okay. So the narrow streets of Italian cities consisted of hard materials, stone and brick. And because many of these cities were confined by city walls, open spaces were at a premium. So this is the world political map during that period. So from the Europe to the Americas, the story of Christopher Columbus. So from here guys, they tried to uh, reach uh, east. So they thought that by going east, they could reach uh, India. Instead, they reached and they discovered um, the Europeans and their perspective. They discovered the US, Canada, and the Americas, including also the Philippines. It was going here. But they were just really aiming for India. Then, moving on to the Industrial Revolutions which is the age of machines. So the age of reason continued to flourish and brought with it inventions left and right until finally the machine was born and changed the world for good. So the printing press is said to be one of the most important machines built by man because it allowed the spread of knowledge. Meanwhile, it was when man learned to make a machine function on its own that his cities were ultimately changed. So this is from the European perspective, guys, because I think there are earlier versions of the printing press, uh, even uh, in the Chinese civilization. So for your assignment, you're going to write what is mercantilism, which countries were central to the mercantilist era, 
And why were open spaces important in Renaissance city planning? So, we don't do it in the Google Classroom because we have a Padlet. So, I'm going to post, wait for my instructions in our Padlet, uh, in our Padlet page before answering this one. So, see you next week, guys. And we're going to have an oral recitation uh, next week. Thank you. So, keep safe, guys.